Well, you, you brought up a big name there. You said Michael Sanker. Now, you've, you've uh, played with some other big names, such as George Lynch, Leslie West. Uh, tell us some, something about them. What's it like to be with those people? Well, uh, those people are all geniuses, the, some of the best guitar players in the world. They are very, very gifted, and I was very lucky to be able to work with them and, and very lucky to be invited on their albums. Mm. And I wouldn't miss it. I learned so much from them. Any, uh, any stories you want to tell us about any of that experience? Uh, there's no particular stories, but um, my first album uh, in this direction, I got uh, on Schaffnell from Mike Varney, who needed a bass player for the Pat Travers Power Trio album. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> uh, he called me one day and asked me if I would like to be on that album. That's, that's how I got the first gig right. on, on Schaffnell. Very cool. Well, how did you get to this level to, uh, to be able to, to do what you're doing? Well, I, I, I started out when I was 16. I was playing actually piano and organ in, in, a, in a teenager band. Mm -hmm. And I grew up not directly in Vienna. I grew up in a smaller city, a 400 population. There were not many musicians available. Yeah, and uh, 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 I played keyboards and we didn't have a bass player. No bass player was available. available. So uh, uh, all we had was another keyboard player. And... Uh, uh, he was much better than I was, so they handed me a bass and said, do this, and from then on, I, I never stopped playing bass. I could be uh, on stage up front. I love people. I love the interaction yeah. with the audience. Well, you mentioned that you're mainly a bassist now. You also mentioned that you were a keyboardist at one time. Do you play any other instruments at all? Uh, not professionally. I, I, play, I play a little bit drums. I play guitar, of course. Uh, I used to have trumpet lessons, but m my main instrument and my love is bass. Okay, well let's switch it up here a little bit. Um, what are you listening to right now? If I was to hop in your car and turn it on, what's in your CD player? Uh, there's probably Dire Straits in there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's rock. I have a CD changer, so I have lots of CDs yeah. in there. But uh, I do listen mainly to rock, but I uh, sometimes people ask me, what, what, what's your favorite era in music? And I always answer 1352, 2008. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's, it's such a big field what I'm listening to and I'm very interested and you can learn actually from everything. Absolutely. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about the music industry. Yeah, obviously it's changed quite a bit recently with the internet and downloads and iPods. What are some of the positive things you think about the current state of the music business? Okay, I think everything is positive. There, there are some dark sides, uh, especially five years ago when it started, people could download music for free. Uh, I do believe an artist should get paid for their craft. I, I don't believe everybody should have a leer chat, but uh, you have to pay your bills and you have to eat. Uh, uh, I think it's going to be a few more years till, uh, till it will actually be dialed in that people get compensated for that, what you have on the Internet. I want my music to be out there. I want yeah. everybody, for everybody to be it available as cheap but I also need some money for it. So the Internet is a great thing for networking and, and it's a great thing to meet people and meet other musicians. And uh, at the moment it is not uh, dialed in, but I think it will happen eventually. Yeah, I think over time it will as well. Yeah. Are you currently in a band right now? Uh, I'm not in a band, no. I I'm, I'm have some sessions coming up, um, uh, but I'm not in a band or touring with a band. Now, the music industry obviously is a very tough business, um, and you've been doing this for a long time. You're a veteran. Have you ever come to the point where you almost just hung it up? Uh, not really, because I think music, you live music. Music, uh, if you do what I did, I do it more than 30 years, and uh, you are music, basically. So yeah. that's, that's what you do. Uh, do you have uh, sometimes a cloud over your career? Yes, I think everybody does, and so did I. And, but uh, really giving up for forever, I don't consider that. I, I, I will pause maybe once in a while, yeah. but I don't think that's something you can give up. Yeah. Well, you've lived uh, all over the globe. You're obviously not from the States. Why Las Vegas? Why, why are you parked yourself here? And how do you feel about the local scene? Well, uh, I think you recognize my accent. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Um, I was born in Vienna, Austria, as I said. Uh, my dad is German. My mom is Austrian. I lived in Germany uh, for 10 years. I, I lived in Austria. I grew up in Austria 26 years. Uh, I always, when I was a little boy, I wanted to come to the States because of the opportunities, of the capabilities in music. Mm -hmm. uh, music is very limited in Germany. I mean, think about who do you know 
from Germany. You know Nena. You know the scorpions. And I'm already running out of things yeah. there. Oh, yeah, I know yeah. craft yeah, There is more stuff. than two. But there's not too many, you yeah. know. And uh, I, I, my career was actually accomplished in Germany already. But it was a dead-end street. And since I love rock and roll and, and this music, uh, I mean, England and America, that's rock and roll. And that's one, one of the of the uh, things America really has, and I always appreciated it. And I always uh, appreciated old Cadillacs, and also Rockabilly, and hamburgers, yeah. and all that American vibe. And I was, always was interested in it. And that's why I came to America. Particularly Las Vegas, uh, I came to Las Vegas because I knew somebody here. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then I moved my whole family from Germany to America. Really? And it's kind of hard to do without help. So uh, when I arrived here, uh, actually they rented a house, friends of mine rented a house already for us, and it was a little bit easier. That's, Las, that's why Las Vegas, and I stayed here. Yeah, that's, it's a good town. I, Absolutely. I, I like it. I love Las Vegas. Well, you, uh, you talked a little bit about the music scene overseas and where you're from. Do you follow that at all? Is, is there anything exciting coming out of there, or is it just that limited? You mean from Germany? Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything exciting coming out of there. Uh, there's lots in, in the German language. Uh, radio station play over there, <coughs> mainstream plays mostly American music really? and, and English music. That was already when I was there many years ago. And uh, I remember once we did a hunger strike really? in front of the radio station with some fellow musicians of mine because it was always English lyrics, which is good, yeah. but we wanted to get a chance to uh, to be heard and, and to get some airtime, but it still does not happen, and for a simple reason, because everything produced in America seems like movies from Hollywood is just better, really? and that's why it's on the air. Yeah, what comes to mind for some reason is, is Ramstein. Ramstein, yeah, sure, they they got, they, they those guys made it, made it over here. It's very rare for a German artist yeah. actually to make it in America, to, to hit the billboard here. Yeah, but, but sadly, being in the industry myself in my 30 years of living, that's the only band from over there that I can think of. So Yeah, Kraftwerk. How about Kraftwerk? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, there's a couple. Right. I, I'm They're sure you know the that. And, and Nana, you know, 99 Luftballons. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then the Scorpions. The Scorpions. Of and, course, they are uh, almost considered Americans. And those two girls tattoo, I think, aren't they? Aren't they? I don't know about them. Oh, yeah. No. yeah that. Yellow is another one, which, which okay. I, that, that's a German band. All right, yeah, so there's, there's a few more. There's a few more. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, how the Internet and iPods and downloads are affecting the industry. You're a musician. Can I find your music online? I think you can, yeah. Uh, you can find it uh, on every website who sells CDs, mm -hmm. even Walmart or Target or all those, those uh, brand name stores. And then, uh, if you don't want to pay for it, you find it on the Russian sites, okay. with the bo all the bootlegs, you know, and YouTube. Yeah, it's everywhere. Well, a lot, of, well, almost everybody these days is on MySpace. Do you have a MySpace page? I do have a MySpace uh, page. It's myspace.com forward slash Gantanesholder. And I also do have a web page, which is Gantanesholder.com. Okay, very cool. Well, um, how about some advice for the young people? As we've, we've, as we've spoken yeah. about before, you've been in this for a while. If you're a 15-year-old kid out there watching this and you want to be a rock star, what advice do you have to the, to the young folks? Well, it might sound very cliché, but <clears throat> it's persistence. Do what you love. Stick with what you do, you know, and, and just move on. Uh, you need some luck in the industry because I know many, many people who are very, very talented in garages, and they never get a break. Yeah. So you, you will need some luck, but as long as you, as you are persistent, persistent, uh, uh, I think you do have a chance. Never give up. Okay. You know it. Well, what if I want to see you live? Uh, any chance of seeing you perform? At the moment, no, but uh, by the end of the year, okay. probably right. something happens. You'll, you'll find it on my webpage okay. well, if we'll something exciting happens. We'll definitely check it out. All right. that's, uh, that's all I got for you today, man. I appreciate you sitting down with us. Thank you so much, Ryan, and Thank you guys. I had a great time here. All right, man. Thanks. Thanks.